Future Vision, a guide to the Kindle app for the iPad for people with low vision. Presented by Anthony O'Hara on the 27th of April 2023. Future Vision is a series of technology events aimed at people living with sight loss. Future Vision is a collaborative project between six local independent sight societies. Sight Advice South Lakes in Cumbria. My Sight Knots in Nottingham, Sight Airedale in the Airedale area of North and West Yorkshire, Support for Sight in Mid and West Essex, Sutton Vision in the London Borough of Sutton, and Outlookers in Huddersfield, West Yorkshire. Hello, my name's Anthony Horner and I'm from Sight Airedale in West Yorkshire. In this presentation, I'm going to look at getting the best out of the Kindle app for the iPad. I initially delivered this presentation on the 27th of April. Unfortunately, due to various technical difficulties, it wasn't possible to record it live. So I'm re-recording it for, so that it can be uploaded onto YouTube. So during this presentation, I'm going to look at the following things. I'm going to look at using the Kindle widget to make it easier to return to the last place you were reading on this device. I'm also going to look at how you can customise the library view to make it easier to use. Then I will look at how you can change the appearance of the text to make it easier for use by a visually impaired person. And I will look at using the speech selection speech screen feature and how this differs from the voiceover screen reader. Then we'll look at using the Kindle app with the iPad voiceover screen reader and we'll look at how you can read and navigate a page in a book, how you can navigate between different chapters of your book, how to use bookmark, how you can use a dictionary, and how you can download a book that you previously purchased via the Amazon website. Usually when you start the Kindle app, it will start on the last screen you were looking at. So for most people, that might either be the, the home screen, or the library, or the last book you were reading. If you always want your Kindle, to open on the last book you were reading, then you can add the Kindle widget to your desktop. So to do that, I'm going to press and hold anywhere on the screen. And now I'm going to tap the plus icon, which has appeared in the top left hand corner. And that brings up my widgets. Then, uh, although it is in the middle of the screen, if it wasn't, I will come down to the Kindle app, which is in on the left hand side of the screen in the long list of apps. And that will bring up the currently reading widget. There are two different styles. So if I swipe to the right, then I can choose which style I'd like. So I want the small one. So I'm going to tap add widget and that adds it to my home screen. And I can move that around, so if I want it up on the top row, all I have to do is just drag it up there. And there you go. And now if I tap done, and now if I tap on the widget itself, that goes straight into my book and onto the last page. So there's a number of different things I can do with the library view to make it a little bit easier to use. First of all, you've got the option of either having it show all the books you have ever purchased or just the books that you've got downloaded on your iPad at a moment. And I'd recommend for most of the time you just keep it to downloaded, especially if you've brought a lot of books in the past. Another option is to actually change how the books are displayed on screen. So at the moment, I've got them in 
grid layout. But I could also have them as a list. So to do that, I'm going to tap on the sort icon, which is at the top of the screen, in the right, at the right hand side, just underneath the search button. And it's two little arrows pointing up and down. And I can tap onto list. Or, and I can also change the sort order so I can choose between title, author, and publication date. Another quite useful facility is the ability to sort books into collections. So let's say, for example, you're studying a particular topic. Uh, so, with the coronation coming up, I've been reading quite a bit about monarchy. So I'm going to go into collections. And I'm going to create a collection on books about the monarchy. So I press the little plus icon, which is next to the sort icon, and it asks me for a title for my new collection. So I'm going to call it Monarchy. I'm going to call it Monarch Create. And now I'm just going to tick the books that I want to include in this in this selection. I want that one. Oh, yeah. And now that I've picked the books I want, I just tap on done. And you can see now that I've got a new collection entitled Monarch. And if I tap on that, that brings up those three books. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can customize the Kindle app to make it easier to use for somebody with low vision. So, first of all, and probably the thing that most people know to do, is to increase the font size. So to do that, all I have to do is tap on the screen, tap on the double A icon, and now I can slide the button at the bottom of the screen up to increase the font size. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get a, a happy balance between the text being comfortable to read but also there being plenty of words on the line. So we don't immediately just want to shove it right up to the maximum. We want to try and get a, a happy, a happy medium. Many people with low vision find reading sans serif font such as Amazon Ember Bold or Helvetica easier to read than serif fonts and serif simply refers to the little tails that you get at the end of font. So now that we've adjusted the font now let's have a look at the layout of the page. At the moment this text is fully justified you've got a straight left margin and you've got a straight right margin. For people with low vision uh, a lot of people will tend to find reading fully justified text difficult because once you get to the end of the line, it's quite difficult to then determine where the next line is. So it's always best to put the alignment into left justified. Also, having plenty of space between the lines can help somebody stay on the current line that they're reading. So in this case, I'm going to put the line spacing up to maximum. Next, I want a nice short margin so that the line length is, is reasonably short. So I could put that up to the maximum or I could leave that in the middle. And it's really a case of experimenting and seeing what the person feels most comfortable with. Many people will find black text on the white background too hilarious. So what you can do with the Kindle app is change the page colour. And we've got three different options as well as uh, black text on the white background. So we've got sepia, which is a little bit better but it, it's not quite as contrasty. We've got mint green and a lot of people, especially people with macular degeneration, find uh, white text on a black background easier to read. And one of the nice features of the Kindle app 
is that you can adjust the brightness of the display independently of the rest of the iPad. Some people find it difficult to follow a line of text and they may, they may become disorientated and end up reading the line below. So one feature that the Kindle has is a ruler. So if I tap on more and then tap on reading ruler and turn on the reading ruler, that now gives me an on-screen ruler that I can use to make sure that I'm staying on the same, on the right line. And there's various different styles of ruler, so it's worth experimenting to see which best suits you. So if you don't normally need the voiceover screen reader, but sometimes you would like to have text read out to you, then you can use the speak screen, uh, speak selection feature. So the speak screen speak selection feature is designed to read out small blocks of text and it does rely on you being able to see enough to choose a block of text that you want to see. Unlike VoiceOver, it doesn't alter the way in which the apps on your iPad work. So whereas uh, with VoiceOver you have to use special gestures uh, to work with your apps, with speech, I mean speech selection, you don't have to do that. VoiceOver is designed to give you full access to your iPad without sight. Um, speech, I mean speech selection requires that you have enough vision to be able to use it. So speech, I mean speech selection is ideal for people who can see enough to be able to move around their iPad, but sometimes just need a little bit of help uh, to read what's on the screen. So to activate the speech screen feature. First of all, tap in settings, then tap on accessibility, then tap on spoken content, ensure that speech selection is turned on and speech screen is turned on. Then tap on speech controller and make sure that show controller is selected. And this brings up the speech controller menu, which is this little arrow here. So when I tap that, I now hit a little menu. And if I press the little pointy hand icon and now tap anywhere on the screen. Highlight content off. That what was under my finger will be read out. So now let's see how this works when we're reading a book. So I can start, I can either do two things. I can either read one page at a time, or I can just get the um, reader to read everything in the book. So I'm going to read one page at a time. So to do that, I'm going to tap on the speech controller. I'm going to tap on the little hand. And then I'm going to tap anywhere on the screen. After the House of Commons passed the Grand Remonstrance, a long list of grievances against actions committed by Charles's ministers since... So you can see there that it just read this page and then finished when I got down to the bottom. If I wanted continuous reading, I can press and hold the speech controller button. And then I could use the previous and next uh, buttons to jump between pages. Also in the speech controller, I can also adjust the speed of the reading voice by tapping on the speed selection button. So I can slow it down and I can make it faster. While I'm in the library view, I can also use the speech selection tool to give me information about the books in my library. So for example, if I tap on the speech controller and now I tap on the hand icon and I tap on the book. 
a crack in creation, the new power to control evolution, Doudna, Jennifer, Sternberg, Samuel, book downloaded, reading is 1% completed. And it will read, give me details of the book I have selected. So while the speech, I mean speech selection creature is excellent for people with enough vision to be able to use it, we're now going to look at voiceover. And voiceover, for people who aren't familiar with it, is a screen reader for, for which I'm built into the iPad. Voiceover is designed for people who have little or no vision and need to use audio to move around their iPad. It changes the way your iPad works, so there are specific gestures which you need to use to be able to use voiceover. So, in this part of the presentation, I'm going to concentrate on looking at how you use the Kindle app with the voiceover screen reader. So first of all, we'll look at how you read a page in your book. So to start reading, swipe down with two fingers. As had Greenwich Palace, which the new king tried and failed to restore to its former splendour. Only Henry VIE's vast, sprawling palace of Whitehall remained habitable for the... And to pause reading, single tap with two fingers. And if I want to resume reading from where I left off, all I need to do is single tap with two fingers again. King and his court. Charles therefore reinstated the... If I want to read the page line by line, I can use the rotor gesture to select lines. Characters, words, lines. Now, if I flick down with one finger... As had Greenwich Palace, which the new king tried and... And if I flick down with one finger again, it will read the next line. Failed to restore to its former splendour. Only Henry V.I.'s. And if I want to read the previous line, I just flick up with one finger. Failed to restore to its former splendour. Only Henry V. has had Greenwich Palace, which the new king tried and... So I actually had to do that twice. When I flicked up the first time, it just started reading the current line. So when I flicked, flicked up the second time, it then read the previous line. I can also read the line word by word. So to do that, I'm going to use the rotor gesture again to select words. Containers, language, links, characters, words. And now if I flick down with one finger, I will move through the line word by word. As had Greenwich Palace. So let's say I want to know how Greenwich is spelt. So if I flick up with one finger to go back to the word Greenwich. Palace. Greenwich. And now I'm going to use the rotor gesture to select character. Lines. Containers. Language. Links. Characters. So now if I swipe down with one finger, it will spell out the word. Cap G. R. E. E. N. W. I. C. H. If I want to return to continuous reading, all I have to do is flip down with two fingers. As had Greenwich Palace, which the new king tried and felt more light than the splendour of majesty which surrounds them. Eleven footnote Charles too seen just what the country needed after almost twi- So you might have heard there that there was a little beep. And that little beep tells you that uh, you have now changed onto the next page. Now you can move backwards and forwards between pages by using a three finger swipe. So if I swipe to the left with three fingers, Influence grew so great that she has been referred to. 
then I will go to the next page and as you heard, VoiceOver automatically starts reading. If I want to go to the previous page, then I need to swipe right with three fingers to go back. Country needed after almost 20 years of bloody civil wars and pure... So now we'll look at how you can navigate between chapters in your book using VoiceOver. So to navigate by chapter, the first thing I'm going to do is double tap with one finger at the top at the top of the screen. Book action, close book, button. Now I'm going to swipe one to the right with one finger to get onto the table of contents. Table of contents, button. And I'm going to double tap. Selected. Kindle, Elizabeth I, 1558-1603-287, button. And voiceover reads me the current chapter. So if I want to move back through the chapter list, so let's say I want to go back to Henry VIII. Um, in this case, I'm going to swipe with one finger to the left to go back. Mary I, 1, Lady Jane Grey, Edward VI, 1, Henry VI, 1509-47, 230, button. So just to give you an idea of what it's saying there, the chapter title is Henry VIII, 1509-1547, and the page number is 230. And this particular book has proper page numbers. So if I went and got the print version of this book and went to page 230, I would also find Henry VIII. So to go to that chapter, all I need to do is double tap. Close book button. Now I can press anywhere in the middle of the screen. Book Actions Menu, Exit Button. And I'm going to double tap to exit the Book Actions Menu. Book Actions Henry VIE, 1509-47, Link 1 Supreme Head and King There had been other examples. And then Hindle automatically starts reading the book, the chapter to me. So now let's look at adding a bookmark. So to add a bookmark, I'm going to double tap at the top of the screen to bring up the book menu. Book action, close book, button. Now I'm going to swipe right with one finger until I hear add bookmark. Table of contents, in book search, my notebook, reading settings, button, add bookmark, button. And now I'm going to double tap to add my bookmark. Bookmark added. Remove bookmark. Button. And if I wanted to remove the bookmark, I'd double tap it again and that would remove it. So now I'm going to tap anywhere on the middle of the screen. Book actions menu. Exit button. And then I'm going to double tap to exit the book actions menu. Book actions. So now how do I go back to a bookmark that I previously set? So first of all, I double tap with one finger at the top of the screen to bring up the book action menu. Book action, close book, button. Now I'm going to swipe right with one finger until I hear my notebook. Table of contents in book search, my notebook, button. And then I'll double tap. Kindle, filter, button. And that displays my notebook. And my notebook has all of my bookmarks, any highlights or any notes that I've 
made in this book and they're all grouped by chapter. So in this example, I want the bookmark that I set in the chapter on Henry VIII. So I'm going to swipe right until I hear Henry VIII, 1509-47. My notebook, explored notebook, close notebook, Henry VIII. 1509-47 Heading So that tells me that the section I'm in at the moment is the Henry VIII chapter. And if I swipe once to the right 1. Heading It tells me that there's one item in this list. So now I'm going to swipe to the right again Favourite Button And I'll swipe to the right again Henry VIE, 1509-47, one supreme head and king there had been other example. Now, there's only one entry here, but if there was one more than one and I wanted to check this was right, I can swipe to the left. Bookmark, page 230. And that would tell me that this was a bookmark, and it a bookmark page 230. So now I'm going to swipe back to the right, onto the text. Henry VIE, 1509-4. And I'm going to double tap, which will take me to that page. Menu off, Kindle, in book. Henry VIE, 1... So one of the useful features of the Kindle is the ability to look up words using the built-in dictionary. So this is excellent when you're in the middle of reading a book and you come across a word that you're not familiar with. So if, while listening to a book, using voiceover, you hear a word that you want to look up, then tap on the screen once with two fingers to pause the reading. So in this case, I want to look up the word coronation. Following the coronation, Charles. And in this case you heard it go on to Charles. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to double tap and hold with one finger. Charles. And I've now got Charles selected. Now coronation came before Charles. So I'm going to slowly move to the left until the voiceover says coronation. Coronation. And now I'm going to lift my finger. Orange highlight button. And that brings up the context menu. So in the context menu, I can do things such as add a highlight, I can copy text, I can add a note, I can share this passage of text with somebody else. Uh, I can search for this text in other areas of the book and if I've spotted a mistake, I can report that mistake. I don't know who you're reporting it to, but you can do. So I want to use a dictionary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swipe to the right with one finger until I hear dictionary. Copy text, create a note, share. Search the book for the select report content at dictionary. Pronunciation button. Double tap to play pronunciation. Double dictionary definition. Coronation slash K turned alpha R schwa modifier vertical line ni ish schwa n slash i. Noun the ceremony of crowning a sovereign or a sovereign's consort. Bullet the Queen's coronation. Or and then stop reading, I just tap once with two fingers. So now that I've read that, if I want to dismiss that, I use the Z swipe. So to do that, I'm going to use two fingers and I'm going to swipe from left to right, right to left, left to right, quickly in the shape of a letter Z. And that now returns me back 
to normal reading mode. So I've just brought a new book on Amazon called The Rank of Dave. And now I'll show how I load that book onto my Kindle. So the first thing I need to do is I need to exit this book that I'm currently reading. So I do a double tap with one finger to bring up the book menu. Book action, close book, button. And then I double tap to close the book, as that's already selected. Menu up, Kindle, notifications, button. Two new notifications. Double tap to open. And that brought me to the home screen. Now I want to be in my library. So if I come down to the bottom left hand corner of the screen and tab bar I selected it. home tab one of five. I locate the home button. Uh, and now I'm going to swipe right one to get onto my library. Library, tab, two of five. Now I double tap. Selected, library, tab, two of five. Now I'm still at the bottom of the screen. So what I want to do now is I want to come up to the top left hand corner of the screen until it says notification. Notifications, button. Two new notifications. Double tap to open. Now at a moment, my library is set up to only show me downloaded books. And I need to show I need it to show me all of my books. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swipe right with one finger until voiceover says all. Search Kindle. Filter. Sh clear filters. All. Button. Now I'm going Shows to... titles from the cloud. One of two. Now I'm going to double tap. Selected. All. Now the book I want is called Bank of Dave by Dave Frischwick. So I'm going to swipe to the right until I reach the book of Dave. Downloaded. View and sort options. Button. Library list view. Crown and scepter. A new history of the British monarchy. Bank of Dave. How I took on the banks. Fishwick. Dave. Book not downloaded. So now I'm going to download the book by double tapping. With one finger. Bank of Dave. Download finished. And I get download finished. Now, the book is selected, but it's not opened. So to open the book, all I have to do is double tap. Kindle. Double tap for menu. Swipe two fingers down for continuous reading. Double tap and hold to select text. It is well enough that pe- And there we are. We've just opened our new Kindle book. Live well and future vision. We hope you enjoyed this presentation. The Live Well events take place on the second Thursday of each month at 10am. Future Vision sessions take place on the fourth Thursday of each month at 10am and are technology events aimed at people living with sight loss. To attend the next session or to suggest future topics, please contact your local sight society who will be able to provide you with the Zoom link.